Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I am at Harrison Bay State Park. And I actually started out this morning, whoa, a lot of sticks. I started out this morning doing a vlogging test with my A6700 and the 11 millimeter F1.8. And while I had that set up on the camera, I thought I would go ahead and introduce this video with that setup. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look around in these woods and try to find some small things to photograph, hopefully mushrooms. Although in all of my walking so far this morning, I haven't seen a single one, but uh, I haven't been doing a very good job looking for mushrooms because mostly I've been testing the vlogging capabilities of this camera. But I'm gonna hike back up to the car, put my Lawa 90 millimeter F2.8 macro lens on, and then get a little bit more serious. So probably the rest of the vlogging from this video will be done with my regular gear, the DJI Pocket 2, but I figured while I had this on here, I might as well do the intro with the 6700. Really struggling to find macro compositions out here. No mushrooms so far, but I did run across this tree right here, which as you can see with my hand on it, it's not a big tree at all. It's a pine of some sort. And I like the way the root system looks as it's going into the ground. And so what I've done was with the macro lens, I've set the camera up over here and yep, I'm using the Lawa 90, mil 90 millimeter macro to do landscape photography. And I've got a composition set up with the camera down low like this. It almost looks like that's a redwood. Um, well, not a redwood, but it looks a lot bigger. And I made a shot at f11 one fifth of a second iso 100. even though this definitely isn't a mushroom i'm still really happy with it you know i was looking for mushrooms and instead i found this composition and i just love the way it turned out with the light coming from the side and also backlit at the same time it really gives the tree lots of depth and you know this shot is f11 and even though it is f11 to get as much in focus as possible it still has a beautifully bokehified background that i thought really turned out nice with all the wonderful colors. And you know, also this lens is 90 millimeters, but on the 1.5 crop sitzer A6700, it's 135 millimeter full frame equivalent. So there's lots of compression here, which I also think helps this composition. Very close to the tree that I photographed, I found a skeleton on the ground right here. Let's see if I can get it in the frame. And as you can see, with my hand beside it, it's almost certainly a squirrel or a rodent of some sort. And I thought it was interesting. So I made a couple of shots of it. I made one at F11 and one at F8. So we'll see which one of those two comes out best. This is the F11 shot and I can't believe I thought it was a squirrel. It's obviously a fish. You can see some fins there on it. And I thought it was interesting. I hope you don't think it's gross. I found another tree that I thought was interesting this one uh, is another really small tree. As you can see, I'll place my hand on its trunk. There we go. But once again, it's the bottom of the tree that I'm fascinated with the way it curves as it goes into the earth and the root system comes out around it. And once again, I'm doing another landscape photography shot with the Lawa 90 millimeter macro. I just love this lens. It, it renders so beautifully. And this time I shot at F8 from back here, nice and low on the ground. And I made a couple of shots. And, and one thing that's interesting about this spot, as you can see, it's backlit. The sun is coming from back there, but it's being filtered by the trees. I can hear a boat in the distance. The sun is being filtered by the trees. And even though that's very bright and backlit. It, it makes a beautiful background, but over here, I'm at the edge of this um, piece of land and the lake is right there. So the, there's light coming in this way. So I've got side light on the tree, but I also have beautiful filtered backlight, which I'm struggling to expose perfectly without blinkies. As a matter of fact, on that one, I made a couple of different exposures. I sure hope I don't have to blend it Hopefully I can use just one shot because whenever you expose your blend, it kind of looks unnatural. So we'll see how that comes out. 
I was pretty happy with this one as well. The background turned out to be just right and the tree in the foreground that's the main subject is beautiful. It looks like maybe when it was a sapling somebody stepped on it and instead of dying it just decided it was going to survive but it survived in a little bit of an unusual look but I think the unusual look is very interesting. Really the only thing I don't like about this shot is there's a blade of grass or a twig or something out of focus in the foreground of the tree which I really wish I had seen that and plucked it out of the way before I made my shot. But otherwise, really happy with this little landscape shot with a macro lens. I found another one. Check this out. I'm right here at the edge of the water and look at the shore erosion from where boats have gone around here and made big waves. But anyway, here's my camera. And I first saw this tree that's right here, but I couldn't get a good composition of it. And then there's another one that's a lot like that, but much smaller. And look, it's surrounded by, by little tiny pine trees. Look at this little thing, some sort of cypress in the foreground. But it has beautiful, beautiful side light on it. As you can see, this side's much brighter than this side, which gives the tree some depth. And it's surrounded by this stuff, and it almost... I don't know, we'll have to see in the shot, but it almost looks like this tree that I've actually focused on is huge and it's surrounded by large trees that are actually tiny in the foreground. And there is some, some backlit aspect to this as well. So what a crazy day. I came looking for mushrooms to use a macro lens on and I'm ending up photographing trees with a macro lens not at macro distance of course this could be done at at any focal length and also i wanted to to mention this lens of course is completely manual manual aperture control no electronic connections to the camera and i programmed the c1 button here to zoom you press it once and it zooms in a pretty good bit and i focus and get my focus point pretty close and then i press it again and it zooms in a huge amount and I can get my focus point exact and I'm using a two second timer. Matter of fact, I'll demonstrate making a shot. Camera's gone to sleep, doesn't matter. The lens definitely didn't move. Woke it back up. I'm at 1 13th ISO 100 F11. And there you have it. I don't know if this looks to you like a jumbled mess or if it turned out really cool, but this is my personal favorite of the day. I just love the way this turned out. All the little saplings of whatever they are in the foreground look bigger than they actually are to me and the tree looks huge to me. And then there's another a uh, little bit larger sapling to the left of the main subject tree that I think looks really awesome and all the colors are nice. I just love the way this turned out. You know I made three or four other shots and I just didn't like them but all the ones I shared with you today except maybe the fish skeleton I'm really happy with. Well, today has not gone even remotely close to how I planned it. I mean, the idea of today was to bring the macro lens and bring setups for tripod macro photography and handheld flash macro photography, look for mushrooms, and make super up close or relatively up close. I probably wouldn't use the full 2x of this amazing lens, but just my plan was to make photos of mushrooms. And even though I didn't find any mushrooms at all, the philosophy of my friend David Sailors, get your camera out and take a picture with it, is what he always says at the end of his videos, and it's a great philosophy, is what's working for me today. Because even though I didn't find what I was planning to find, I ended up finding something that I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with when I get back home. and look at these photos on the computer there's no trail here i'm just in the woods so I'm having to kind of figure my way back out of here i know the general direction to go but uh and you know i had other lenses with me that might have been more suited to landscape photography but i wanted to stay with the 90 millimeter macro because i wanted to show that even though things didn't go right i was able to kind of persevere and make something out of it 
and this is something you can do too but if you don't do like david says and get your camera out and take a picture you're just going to sit there and stay home and not go out and create so like another friend of mine always says adrian alford never stop creating and that's what i did today i just you know came out and with one idea and when that didn't work out i kept at it until i found something that did work and i sure hope you enjoyed it Whew. and uh i appreciate it and a thumbs up is appreciated as well i'd love to hear your comments on whether or not you thought these photos were interesting or or silly uh it's definitely not your normal landscape photography but i do enjoy photographing just the base of trees when i first started getting more into landscape photography and a little bit uh you know straying away from wildlife photography which had been kind of my main thing one of the things that i first discovered that i really enjoyed photographing is the base of trees i just love the way they look and especially when they're side like like side like side light like we found today so anyway thanks a bunch subscribe hit the bell and i found my way back to the car and as always i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye bye